Hi there. My name is Ben Cromey, and I'm one of the optics ambassadors here at the University of Arizona James C. Wyant College of Optical Sciences. And it's my pleasure to be giving you a virtual building tour today. So we start off our buildings tours here in the third floor lobby. This is a large open area within the building. Let me show you a few of the cool things that we have in here. We have this desert flower, which is a lovely sculpture. It doesn't look like much from the side. But once you can look down the center, then you see all the beautiful artwork and optics coming together to create this beautiful flower. We also have this uh, fun sphere here in the lobby. That, uh, there we go. Now you're seeing me through this really large sphere. <laughs> so the College of Optical Sciences was founded by uh, Aidan Meinel back in the 60s. We ended up out here at the University of Arizona because Aidan Meinel was already out here for astronomy because in Tucson we have a lot of open night skies. It was a great place to uh, look at the stars. Now thanks to what was then the Optical Sciences Center and is now the College of Optical Sciences, it's a great place to learn about optics too. One of the great things about being a student here is we have an uh, industrial affiliates program which is a group of companies that partner with us and uh, come out twice a year to see students. So we've got a list of people who donate to the college up here on this wall, including our industrial affiliates. Thanks to all that generosity, as we go up these stairs, you'll see there's a lot of plaques on the wall behind me. And every one of these plaques is a scholarship that only optics students compete for. A lot of them are awarded to first year PhD students as well. Something I should note before we leave this space is the really large uh, vertical space that's open above us, it creates quite the effect. There's three of these in these open spaces in this tour, in this building, so we'll see all three of them as we walk. So we're gonna kind of take a little walk through a little bridge area here. So that's between the expansion of the building from 2005 and the original portion of the building the Optical Sciences Center. Now usually there's a guided tour that you can take of the building yourself if you would like to come see the Museum of Optics, but uh, due to all the coronavirus stuff, the virtual tour is what we have at the moment. Now the college has had a lot of really, really bright people associated with it in its history, including three Nobel laureates. At one point, there were three Nobel laureates in the entire state of Arizona, and all three of them were here at the College of Optical Sciences. Nico Blumbergen is a wonderful man. He was here for quite a while, I got to meet him. And uh, he's considered the father of nonlinear optics, which is a field that's very important for my research here as a graduate student. So if you're in this building, you might notice that we start on the ground floor at the fourth floor is a bit odd. Usually you wouldn't have the ground floor be the fourth floor, but there's a good reason for that. But beneath us right now is a facility for making very large optics. Now if you've heard of the U of A Mir Lab, this isn't quite the Mir Lab. We, the Mir Lab is underneath the football stadium. We're heading down some stairs here. In the U of A football stadium they make the large 8.4 meter mirrors for telescopes such as the Large Synopsic Survey Telescope and the Giant Magellan Telescope, both of which are bound to the Chile Desert, or the Atacama Desert in Chile, I should say. But we still make pretty large optics down here. In the last few years, we were upgraded so that we could handle six meter optics in this area, which is quite large. We're kind of the only facility in the world that can claim to uh, make optics across nine orders of magnitude from these really, really large mirrors to the uh, really, really small stuff some of our professors do. So conveniently in these stairs, there's a few little windows where we can take a peek into the large optics lab. So we don't have a mirror at the moment. We finished with the Tokyo Atacama Observatory mirror not that long ago but this white area below us is where the mirror would normally sit. 
Pretty much all of this technology for making mares this large is, was invented at the University of Arizona. You can see the large crane that they used to hoist it around. You can kind of see, we'll see a little bit better below, but there's a large vertical open space above that mirror. And the reason why that's there is they can shine a laser beam down on top of the mirror and measure its precision to astonishing accuracy. Because of measurements like that and the, the technology that we've come up with here at the U of A, we can make these mirrors incredibly, incredibly precise. So imagine we took this mirror and we made it the width of the United States. The largest surface imperfection on that mirror then would be the size of a quarter laying flat. So it's a very, very precise shape. So you've just gotten down another floor. We're gonna peek into the lab again. There's a tarp overhead, so it, you can kind of see a slightly better view of that opening above. And this is the platform that the mirror would be on. This large yellow arm is where the polishing head to grind the mirror would be. Now the basement part of optics is actually mostly not students. There are some labs and some students down here, but uh, a lot of the people on this floor are all full-time engineers that are fulfilling contracts. We're very fortunate to have a very strong connection with industry in this building. And as a result, we have a lot of real contracts that people are working on, such as creating those extremely large mirrors. So normally I would ride the elevator up to the sixth floor, but it's under maintenance right now. So we're gonna have to take the stairs back up. It is kind of funny to be, that fourth floor thing always confuses people, especially on this side of the building. The third floor lobby that we started in is actually the only third floor that uh, most of the building has. There's one room on the third floor on this side of the building. But if you go in the elevator, it just says one, two, and then four. And on the side where that third floor lobby that we started our tour in, there is nothing underneath that. There's no first or second floor on that side of the building. We just like to confuse people, you know? Here in the college, we've got usually about 100 and 120 undergrads there and about. We start counting the undergrads once they enter their sophomore year because they don't really take any optics courses with us. This freshman, but uh, so that's usually 30, 40 students per class. Usually a little bit thinner as it gets to the seniors. And then we have between three and 400 graduate students. We're very fortunate that thanks to the d generosity of Dr. James Wyant, whom the college is named after at this point, that was last year in 2019, thanks to his generosity, first year PhD students do not have to pay for their first year or find a research professor. It's all covered by the college, which is wonderful. So we're now on the fifth floor. As I mentioned, there's kind of a self-guided tour of optics where you can see all of the various pieces that Professor Grieving Camp has curated over the years. This is kind of an interesting collection. These are long draw binoculars. You probably think of someone like Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies with that long draw telescope. But before they figured out how to make binoculars, like the ones we do have now with the little prism that flips the image right side up, they were basically taking two long draw telescopes and slapping them next to each other, which was hard to do well given the precision and manufacturing at the time. You can imagine that even just a slight misalignment and angle between these things would make them very difficult to use. It wasn't until you had the combination of Ernst Abbey, who was the mathematician, Carl Zeiss, who was the engineer, and Otto Schott, who was the glassmaker, these guys all came together and were able to finally make glass that was clean enough to make a prism. Because usually there's a lot of lead impurities in glass. If you've ever noticed glass that's kind of green on the outside, uh, or if you look at it from the side, that's the lead impurities in that glass. 
and that's what causes it to be less clear. So Schott could make glass that was clear enough to make a good prism, and then Zeiss was the engineer that put them all together. You might still recognize those names because Carl Zeiss, the company, Zeiss the company is still a major player in the optics world, especially in their microscopes, and Schott is a major glass company to, still today. So we're now in the second of three large open spaces in optics. There's this large piece of artwork behind us and another large open space directly overhead. This is a nice little study area. You'll often see a student sleeping on that couch. Often there's a lot of math on that whiteboard from students working together on assignments. Now this is the part of the tour where I usually ask if someone is afraid of heights because another set of staircases in this building plays a bit of a cruel trick on people who are afraid of heights. So this is the last of the three large vertical open spaces in this stairwell. You can see up very high up to the ceiling there. But an interesting thing to note is that this wall actually slants away from us a little bit. So as you look down, it gives you the impression that you're higher up than you really are. So you've been warned. We're about to look down. See how it slants away? It becomes even more pronounced the higher up we go. So we're about to go up to the seventh floor now. We enjoy doing a lot of outreach here at the College of Optical Sciences. You may not really have a good feel for what the word optics really means. A lot of people think it means that we're all going to be eye doctors one day or that I know a lot about lightsabers. But it really is a very fascinating field that enables a lot of different fields to exist. For example, when Apple makes a new smartphone, a lot of people praise Apple for it. But in reality, a lot of those chips that are smaller and faster are enabled by advancements in really, really short wavelengths that create those chips. All right, we're gonna peek over the edge again. We've only gone up two floors, but man, it sure looks like we're high off the ground. I had a teacher who was legitimately afraid of heights have a real hard time with these stairs after she looked down. So I always like to ask after that. We're now on the seventh floor of the building. Professor Grievenkamp's office is on this floor and there's some very nice pieces from the Museum of Optics that he curated. For example, these long draw telescopes are very old because they actually have animal skin on the outside instead of bronze. That's what they wrapped them with. I think that puts them in the mid 1700s if I recall correctly. We've got some really nice telescopes here. You can see those dates in the display case, quite, quite old. So these guys on the top here are small replicas of the Fresnel lenses that would be inside of lighthouses. These would help direct the light from uh, the bonfire or the large lantern, oil lantern, to be in only the most useful direction. Because it's lighthouse isn't very useful, it's only sending light up straight into the air, but we want to be able to direct it out towards people, which these large Fresnel lenses were very uh, efficient at doing so without wasting too much glass. Some old spectacles in here as well. A few more telescopes. We have quite a collection of these uh, long draw telescopes, some which are quite long and would have to have been mounted. Mid 1700s, that is an old, old telescope. We also have this nice collection of uh, glass artwork. Some of them are in pretty fun shapes, but my favorite is actually this little guy right here. Because as you look at him from different heights, you'll see his colors can change quite significantly. We have a few portraits here in the wall. This is James Wyant, who our college is now named after. Our previous directors as well. And this is Aiden Meinel, who our building, the building itself is named after. Aiden Meinel was involved in a lot of uh, classified stuff back in the day. 
Part of the reason why the college was founded was to have more people who knew how to build spy satellites back in the 60s. So we're going to go up one more floor to the 8th floor, which has some really nice views of campus. A really nice meeting room. We like to wallpaper our walls with science here in the Optics College. It's a lot of fun because you can kind of get a feeling for the kind of work that a professor's labs are doing. Because you'll see all the different entrances to the labs and then you can kind of look right across the way and see the kind of cool work that they're doing, which is pretty fun. Alright, one more set of stairs and then we'll be almost done with our virtual lab tour. All right, here we go. So the eighth floor, under normal circumstances, is where we would see a lot of students out studying in this space. Not very many people on campus right now. And then out here, we have a lovely view of the campus. You can see the Catalina Mountains to our north here as well as the National Optical Astronomical Observatory right across from the Planetarium Flandre right there. Then we can get a good look at the main portion of the U of A. From that hole in the ground, which is the Integrated Learning Center, there's a whole bunch of underground classrooms out there, to the old main building right in front of that American flag across the way, which is the oldest building on campus and is actually older than Arizona being a state. We were just a territory when that building was built. As well as the uh, football stadium over there. And a few more mountains off to the side. Well, thank you for joining me on this virtual lab tour. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the College of Optical Sciences, you should head to optics.arizona.edu. You can learn a lot more about what it's like to be a student here or the various programs that we do. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me.